Now we take a closer look into the revolutionary legislation here in Israel that completely changes women's access to abortions. According to Israeli law, women do not have automatic right to an abortion, but rather must request a permission from a legally mandated end of pregnancy committee comprised of uh, three representatives of the hospital or clinic that would perform the procedure. Women have uh, long described the system as humiliating and invasive and attempts to reform the system have been blocked for years until now with progressive health minister Nitzan Horowitz introducing a groundbreaking set of legislation that would give the outdated mechanism a much much needed makeover so uh, to get a better understanding of what's happening uh, now we're joined by Dina Shalev director of Lada Choose Well NGO and Sylvia Freund executive director of Open Door NGO thank you uh, ladies very much uh, for um, talking to us today so before we talk about about what's ahead. Could uh, you please illustrate what has been the case so far? Sylvia, I know it's uh, not just the committee we have mentioned, but even the questionnaire women were forced to fill in, including extremely embarrassing and medically irrelevant questions, such as did you use any protection, etc.? Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, the thing is, there is a questionnaire which is very, very invasive uh, with the uh, uh, questions. Uh, like uh, uh, questions like uh, how uh, why do you don't you use the um, um, yeah. um, uh, contraceptive uh, birth control uh, and uh, uh, and there are very very invasive questions and the promoter the the uh, the thing that we want to do is uh, uh, also to promote the the new law but also. Uh, the Ministry of Health are, is trying to uh, change the regulations for the um, right. uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, procedure. Paper. Yeah, yeah, and yes. and, and, and Dina, the, the committees themselves. We're talking about medical committees, uh, even though they're rarely uh, rejecting such pleas, um, they are encouraged or instructed to try and persuade women not to end their pregnancy, right? Well, up to recently, that was part of their, like when you had to, uh, that was the, that was the instruction up to right. recently. Yeah, the idea of the committees was to get women to do less abortions. Um, this is one of the reforms that were already put in place that the Minister of Health um, canceled that, um, the idea. Yeah, it, yeah. It was a, yeah, it's called the Man Kal. It was a letter it's like telling the committee that this is one of their main goals, and that's been already canceled. So that's already a great step towards change. Right, and um, uh, so you've mentioned uh, both of you briefly the what what does the legislation uh, entails, but what would it mean in practice? Still a committee, but not one that tries to convince you not to perform. The questionnaire, as we mentioned, will be less uh, invasive, right, Sylvia? Yes, for the first trimester, there will only an advisory committee, mm -hmm. and the, the second one also, and the third uh, for the third trimester will be a medical one. This is the major change in every uh, step of the way, and uh, is given uh, the women the freedom of uh, of choice and the decision of their own body. Right, and Dina, how immediate is the change going to be? Is it going to be gradual or all in um, in one revolution? So I'll put things in place. Um, there are the reforms that the Minister of Health can do, which, mm. like, for instance, can make that uh, instruction or changing some of the questions, turning the, the form to be an online form. So these are all things you can do now um, right. to make the experience a bit less negative. And what Sylvia was talking about is also there is a law um, a proposal on the table to cancel the committees. Uh, this is something that Horowitz isn't um, like uh, putting forward himself, mm -hmm. but some of the, M the um, MKs are. So, so then for that, we will actually be canceling the committees or their authority to say yes or no, and they will become an advisory board. That's there's still a long way till we get to that. That's like the end. Mm -hmm. um, the end. Uh, which again in this coalition there's a big question mark will we be able to actually do this or not but as of now there are a lot of changes we can make to at least make 
the experience a bit easier for women. Right, and I can only imagine that uh, conservative powers in parliament, uh, most notably perhaps the ultra-orthodox uh, representatives, are going uh, uh, to present uh, uh, some backlash in this respect. And we also need to know that we've seen anti-abortion uh, NGOs uh, launching an extremely fierce public campaign against uh, this uh, revolutionary uh, reform, right? Um, we, we see, first of all, they always have complaints. Um, some of them are actually saying they're pro uh, canceling the committees, but then also means there will be a lot of resources in there to persuade women against abortions. Because right mm. now, actually, for the uh, uh, organizations that um, don't believe women should have abortion, um, the committee isn't such a good thing for them because 99%, over 99% of the right. abortions are approved. So it's like, it gives them kind of a, a hech shit, like. Right, you know, they, yeah, they, a kosher stem. Approval, right. Once those would be removed, we might see a lot of backlash also trying to reach women and manipulate right. them. Yeah, and, and Silvina, before we need uh, to uh, conclude this uh, discussion, what is next? As we've heard, there's still a way to go until it will all be settled, but what can you identify as the next goal? The next goal is uh, to uh, support uh, the, uh, the, uh, the members of the Knesset, uh, like Michal Rosin and uh, Gabi Lasky, to, uh, uh, to continue to force, uh, the, to continue to support the, the, this uh, parliament law and uh, the regulations that uh, are going right. to change uh, the, the procedures uh, if uh, the law isn't uh, um, yeah. Performed uh, by the yes. end.